this whole, I ju I'm trying, I mean, you know, Tory party conference after the Labour Party conference isn't the most scintillating way to spend your life. Um, what's extraordinary, I know you've been watching from a distance, the Labour Party conference last week was a pretty morbid affair. Uh, every, all the delegates seem to be sort of down in the mouth. You'd think that they'd be rushing in, you know, 12 weeks, the biggest majority in history, and the Tories seem a little bit more upbeat, which is probably a, a lot to do with how appallingly the Labour Party's done in the last 12 weeks, from nowhere. I think that's probably true. I, I don't think anyone expected that Keir Starmer, for all his fanfare about being, you know, um, moralistic, sticking to the rules, you know, being all about ethics and honesty, would be embroiled in a scandal effectively about dodgy donations this early on within sort of three months of becoming prime minister. So I think it's probably understandable that activists are feeling a little bit cheesed off and maybe even a bit missold about precisely who Keir Starmer has portrayed himself as for the past few years. He was quick to point the finger at any Tory MP who did anything even, you know, an ounce outside the rules. And yet here we are now. Um, and it seems like he's not really willing to take much responsibility for the fact that what he's done in terms of donations goes down like a cup of cold sick out there in the country. And it's really interesting because the Tories, of course, were accused of covering it up. And I do not in any way support what happened at the end. I think it was a debacle, old bloody thing, right? But he doesn't seem to even understand. This is what I would say to him, right? The optics, D, are so yeah. appalling. And, and I... You know, we all know that the South predominantly will vote for the Tories or this time the Liberal Democrats and the North, well, used to vote for the, for, for the Labour Party. But I know, and you know, everybody knows, that millions of working men and women across this country who feel like they're at the back of the queue, that they don't break the law, they pay their taxes, they get no help from anybody... They, they do not see the Labour Party based in Islington or Lord Alley's penthouse as the party of the working man or woman. I'm nothing to do with the Tory party. I'm, I've been uh, super critical. But if they do anything, they need to get their heads out of their backsides and get somebody who can say, we made mistakes, and go to those areas and say, listen, we've got to start afresh. This has got to be about this country. We seem to be helping anybody and everybody, bar the people in this country, who should be helped because they've paid into it for years. We seem to ostracise them, and I don't understand it. Never have. Yeah, I, I find myself in a really kind of confused position about who Labour are trying to sell themselves to at the moment because their entire narrative is about it's it's to help working people, working people, working people, working people. Really? There's a sound by. And yet you look at some of the decisions they're making and how they're selling their budget due uh, next month. They're basically selling it as it's going to be this really difficult doom and gloom budget. Obviously, it's all the Tories' fault because of this black hole that they definitely didn't know about before they got into power. Um, and I just find it... Can we just strange. add the black hole conversation? <laughs> £22 billion, whether that's a fact or not, the Office of Budget Responsibility would have allowed that information to go to the opposition. But mm -hmm. here's the bit I don't get, and I'm not as, I'm an nth as intelligent as all as you lot. If you're £22 billion in debt, on day seven, why would you spend another £11 billion giving your union paymasters a pay rise? That makes sense, because suddenly it's £33. Well, this, this, this is exactly the point, isn't it? I mean... Politics is about choices. I think Keir Starmer used that exact phrase, and yet he's chosen to pay train drivers who are on a pretty good whack as it is at the expense of pensioners, some of whom are on incredibly, incredibly low incomes, worrying this year about how they're going to And we'll home. die, Dee. We'll die this winter. Well, but th th there is a chance that for some that could happen if the temperatures get incredibly cold. All the while, the optics are he's taking hundreds of grands in donations, 20 grand to buy himself some new suits and some new glasses. And I'm not sure how you can sell yourself as being for working people if that's the first thing that comes out about you when you come into office. I mean, I completely I agree. And then you've got R. Ange, the darling of the Labour Party and the trade unions, talking about the, the very thing you just said. When I do workers' rights, workers' rights, you've just spent 68 grand on a bleeding photographer to make your image look better. No, but to me... I am amazed at the lack of advice or the lack of direction. But look, we can go on and on about that. The, the Tory party that you no longer represent, but you talk and you do brilliantly, uh, they're looking for a new leader. I think they're mm. in a hole as well, because suddenly, this is my view, I'd love to know yours. Um, Badenoch seems to have become this person who gets embroiled in any fight about anything. And I'm not saying that the culture wars aren't important. We talk a lot about being anti-woke. I think that's important. Jenrick seems to grab anything that will, will salivate the members, immigration and ECHR, which I think the Tory party needs to consider. And then you've got the two 
steady One Nation Tories, Cleverly and Tugendhat, who want to bring Rwanda back, amongst other things, who don't seem to offer any difference to what patently failed. And, and for me, E.D., and I said it earlier not very well, the Tory party needs to find an identity, even if that means upsetting mm -hmm. a few people, and go with it and believe in it. I actually hugely agree with you there. And I think when I was last on a couple of weeks ago, we were discussing the length of this leadership contest, which to me has left a kind of open goal, really, for Labour to just carry on and carry on and carry on without any kind of one person leading. Well, they're not doing a very good job. They don't need to be attacked at the moment. They're attacking themselves. I mean, that, I think the Tories have got lucky, but I just, I feel like, mm. I feel like Thatcher took on the people that disagree with her. I think that Blair took on the people that disagree mm. with him. I feel like the Tory party needs somebody who goes, listen, I might not be popular, but this is what's going to happen. I'm not changing my bleeding mind. I'm going to get us back to where we were. And I just don't mm. know whether there are those the politicians anymore, are there? I, th I think it's it's a really tough contest, this, because ultimately the people who are going to elect you are the MPs first to get you to that final two and then the party members. So, of course, you kind of need to some extent to play to your audience. Yeah. But I think you're right that when it gets past that point in terms of, I don't want to say playing to the country, but just speaking to the country, yes. the party has to have a vision, a proper vision, and a golden thread that is going to tie together all of those individual policies that we're either going to be criticising from Labour or putting forwards ourselves. And at the moment, the party has been so fragmented for so long that I, I know what I think it should be based on my conservatism, but I'm not sure specifically what the party stands what, what for. What do you so think it should be based on your conservatism? What should it be? But ultimately, it should be down to spreading opportunity, right? It should be making sure that whether you grow up in Basildon or Brixton or in uh, Bath or Birkenhead, you've got a chance to get on. And that's what that whole like, kind of levelling up side of things is all about. But the way that we do that is by promoting hard work, by lowering taxes on people, giving them the freedom to make their own decisions and to do well, taking restrictions off businesses, letting businesses flourish so that they can employ more people, invest in their people, improve their local areas. That's what it has to be about to me. And I think sometimes we get so distracted by other issues, we forget about the tangible day-to-day -day things that are impacting people out there in the country in their everyday lives. It has to be bread and butter conservatism. And I think all four of the kind of contestants in there now believe in that, believe in that same stuff, because I think that's what pulls all conservatives together. But we need someone to really, really spread that message and make sure that the entire policy offer fits into that as well, so that everyone out there knows exactly what the Conservative Party stands for and that it stands for them. Let's talk about reform. I thought the biggest mistake, uh, I thought the biggest mistake at the moment, isn't this interesting, Tory leader polls just in, 59% don't know, 13% cleverly, 12% generic, 10% Kemi and 6% Tugendhat. Am I allowed to ask you, who would you vote for? Um, at this stage, I still haven't decided, and obviously I'll only get a vote of the, the final two. But I think for me, I'd probably, based on what he said on the main stage today, he was grilled by um, Christopher Hope, I think. Tom Tugendhat, I think, has got a really good message. He's kind of, he's not apologetic about the past, but recognises that stuff has gone wrong. He's not really very dynamic, sure though, is he, D? He's not very dynamic when he speaks, is he? I, th I think he is more so than people think. He's got a cracking sense of humour. It came across relatively well on that stage today. And I think with Tom, the more people see of him, the more people like him. So I'll be interested to see if that does resonate over the next few weeks before the contest. But I have to say for me, unlike in the last leadership contest, where rightly or wrongly, I backed Liz Trust because I really believed in her vision. And the vision was the reason I got behind her. At this stage, for me, there isn't a standout candidate in terms of that vision and that kind of future projection of what we want conservatism to look like.